This is the five tech things you should know about episode number 46 for July, what is it, uh, the 9th, 2010. Ah, summer's almost over. It's also the construction edition. We'll tell you a little bit about that more in a minute. Right now, brought to you by mosey.com. Jeffrey Power is here. Welcome down to the Geek Bar and the five tech things you should know about TV Azine with the Association of Geek Azine over on the techpodcast.tv network. You should go over there, check it out. Child safe, friendly shows. It's awesome. Over at techpodcast.tv. Of course, you can find us on Blip. You can find us on VodPod. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us anywhere and everywhere. So check us out. Put a friend, uh, pretty, put a like on it. Put a friend on it. Put a, anything on it. And I know that you're out there. One little thing i got to tell you is we're having some construction done upstairs on the roads. They're going to be con- doing construction until July 23rd. So you might hear a boom, and you might wonder what was going on. It's just the fact that they're, they're, they're resurfacing the roads. So don't worry about it. We're not under attack by any means. It's your life online. You should back it up. I always say back it up now, back it up often, back it up off-site with mosey.com. Geek. Remember that code? Geek. G-E-E-K. Geek. 10% off. My laptop has a lot of files on it, so if my hard drive was to die, I'd lose all those files, and I couldn't get them back. There's no way I could get them back. That's why I use Mosey Home Unlimited. $4.95 per computer. It's the price of a hard drive per year. It's a great safety mechanism right there. $4.95 a month. Use the code GEEK. You get 10% off. GEEK, 10% off. That's over at Mosey.com. Just go over to Geekazine, click on the Mosey link, and use the code GEEK at checkout for that 10% off. Back up now, back up often, back up off-site with mosey.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about this whole iTunes issue. Basically, a person by the name of that Gen, hopefully I pronounced that name right, <laughs> pushed books to the app, the app Store. They found a hole where they could actually push it to the top of the bestseller list. And these apps uh, were not bestsellers by any means. So they took that advantage with these comic book apps. Well, now Apple has found this little hole. They've patched the hole, from what I understand, and this shouldn't be a problem anymore. The, 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 this person, that is actually not going to be on iTunes Store anymore, so you're safe. If you didn't buy any books, you, should be, you shouldn't have any problems. There was, a, there was a small controversy with credit cards. It asked for security codes. So he didn't get your credit card number. He might have gotten your security code number. So you might need to get, uh, you might need to check that if you see some extraneous charges on your credit cards. But the problem has been uh, circumvented. If you do not see any problem now, then you won't see. But you should check your credit card statements just in case if you have an iPhone. All right, take a look at this. These are the brand new Sony cameras. We have the T99, we have the WX5, and we have the TX9. Now the T99 has a 14.1 megapixel sensor in it while there's a 12.2 megapixel sensor in the other two. The most amazing thing about this is the T99, it's underwater capability option. Uh, it can do shooting sweep, it can do up to 1080i, I, not 1080p, but 1080i interlaced. And if you're not sure what that is, I'll, I'll put a link on Wikazine over at geekazine.com so you know how what the difference is between 1080i and 10, 1080p. The biggest thing is it has multi-angle for 3D style which was pretty interesting because we were watching Hulu last night and every single trailer that you saw was in 3D. Unless it was going to DVD, then it was in not 3D. So, But anyway, these are pretty darn cool cameras and 14.1 megapixel sensor. That's like a DSLR right there. I wonder what it's shooting like. Maybe we can get one from Sony and check that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about texting and driving. More to the point, legality versus freedom. Now, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of weird things in my driving career, like uh, not just text, but also put on makeup, eat a whole meal. You know, I remember going to a meeting, and this one presenter kept going, oh, yeah, you'd be on the road, and I could have a thing of chicken in one hand and a thing of, uh, a thing of ranch dressing in the other hand and a Coke underneath my arm, and I could still drive 55. Oh, well, he got lucky. 
But basically, we're talking about texting and driving, and it is dangerous, and you shouldn't do it. There's a lot of companies out there like DriveSafe.ly that have programs that let, that let you read your emails. Or they, they read them aloud, but you still have to look at the iPhone to, to get to a couple points so you can check out all that information, so you don't have to read while texting. Well, there's a lot of debate on this, especially over at the House. Washington has a, has a bill that's going out there that's going to ban texting while driving. Some people say it's a good thing. Some people say it's a bad thing. There's a lobbying firm that sought to redirect the national database, basically because they see this getting hijacked by people like Oprah Winfrey that are just kind of uh, pushing it for their own stats and, and, and popularity. So they want to rewrite this bill and make sure that we're not impeding on freedoms because there's a lot of freedoms that seems that Washington and government is getting impeding on, such as a certain Wisconsin smoking ban that happened last week. Some of you may like it, some may not. It's not the point. It's a point about legal versus freedom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. This is called the wet circuit. It is a plug, and as you can see on the screen, she is not only pouring water on the plug, she's also putting a pair of tweezers into the prongs on one of the plugs to show how safe this thing is. It's amazing. It has absolutely no carbon buildup inside, so you won't get sparks when you plug and unplug uh, different devices. By the way, if you get a plug and you plug something in you see a spark, that means you got carbon buildup. You might want to think about something there. The biggest problem with, with surge protectors especially is people plug one surge protector into the next surge protector and you're not supposed to do that. First of all, it doesn't trip the uh, surge protector that well, but second of all, it heats up all the plugs and this is one of the number one causes of surge protectors for getting fires in the home is overheating. Well this plug right here, this surge protector, will actually quit at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. If it reaches that temperature, it's going to stop working. It's amazing. We, shot all, we showed all the video over at Geekazine Weekly Podcast. You should check it out. The best part about this plug, it's only $35. So if this does everything that they say that it does and it works perfectly, you might want to start thinking about changing out your surge protectors with these. I hope they make bigger ones because I like more than four plug surge protectors myself. Heading back over to the politics side, Republicans apparently want Skype. And you're going, well, what do you mean by that? Well, apparently back in 2006, Republicans banned peer-to-peer -peer traffic through the networks. And just so there wasn't file sharing, illegal stuff, and so on and so forth. One of the peer-to-peer -peer applications is Skype. Well, now, now that the Democrats are in office, the Republicans wanted to petition to say, hey, we want Skype back. And, you know, the Democrats are kind of agreeing on this, so we've got, we've got a mutual agreement here. But the question is, how do you reopen up these portals to let Skype through without letting any other peer-to-peer -peer tra traffic through? But more to the point, can we get this done right away? Apparently, this is actually going to save a lot of money for a lot of people um, so they don't have to travel back and forth to talk to constituents or whatever. So I see this as a good idea. I hope you see this as a good idea. Maybe there's something I'm missing here, and if there is, just let me know. But open up Skype so people can use it. Now, you can't use it on certain levels because you have to have public record out there. And Skype might not be a public record, but because as opposed to recording a phone call or recording a video call, and more importantly. So we'll see what happens there, but I think that Skype should be a great tool for Republicans and Democrats alike and maybe we can all get along. And that is the five tech things that you should know about. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thank you to all the construction workers for taking their lunch break while I finished off this video. If you want to catch me, you can go over to geekazine at gmail.com or call me at 608-205-4378. Until next week, you guys have a safe one, and we will see you next time.